Hi, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers, and in this week's video, we have a multi-part Excel file manager where we're going to be going over the many possible features we can use with a file manager. It's going to be multi-part, including multiple weeks, where we'll be adding new features each week, and I'm super excited to bring this to you, so thank you very much for joining us. All right, let's get started. Uh, this week's Excel file manager is going to be jam packed with lots of features and we'll be adding more each and every week based on your suggestions. So you are going to be a vital part of this training. So your suggestions that you will add in the comments below will dictate what types of features I will be adding in the coming weeks. Uh, I've got a basic file manager here today to show you and uh, right now we just have the uh, copy paste uh, delete features as well as the setup so we're going to go over all of that today and we've got multiple features that we're going to be adding in the future including uh, filtering including sorting additional tabs uh, and whatever you bring uh, to us I will go ahead and try to institute in this uh, particular file manager we're also going to be adding preview in the coming weeks so that's going to be a really great feature but in today's video what we're going to do is we're going to go over the basic structure of the file manager and how we were able to achieve this so it's going to be a really great training and let's start off with this left side uh, folder structure here and how we went about doing that. And one of the integral parts of this particular training is its icons. As you can see, there's uh, different icons here, and we didn't use that using any pictures. We're gonna actually use a font, and it's called Font Awesome. And I'm gonna include that Font Awesome with the download of this application. Uh, you can also see Font Awesome is a great little uh, font that improves. Let's go ahead and take a look at that, what that font looks like. And you'll see right here, it is the Font Awesome. And if we were going to insert a particular uh, symbol, and we will look at, we can pull up Font Awesome here and see what that looks like. All right, so let's go ahead and pull that up. And we can see all of the different types of uh, types of little icons that you can be added with this, and that's going to be super helpful uh, as we create specific icons throughout the application. Now there is so many here; you may want a quick way to search it. And here we have font awesome icons, and I'll include this website as well. So if you have a particular one that you want, like let's say folder, right? We want to create a folder. And here we have folder here. So we're using that search in this particular website, we can quickly locate it. And we've used two of them. We've used the open and close folder. So if we were going to locate this, we'd click on it. And it tells us that this is F07C. So we can copy that. And then back into Excel, we could just type in, paste it right here. And it's going to locate that really quickly for us. So here we have two folders. So if we were to insert it, we would use this here. Now I've gone ahead and done that for you. And let's go ahead and take a look at all of the different types of file uh, types that we have in sheet number two, where I have gone ahead and added a lot of different types of file associations along with an icon and color. And I'll show you how that was done. So I've got basically got a list of file types and I've assigned uh, particular icons. Now you can and probably should assign different icons here as well. So if you like a particular icon with a particular file type, you can go ahead and make those changes here. And uh, that is not a problem. Uh, I've just uh, gone ahead. I also have a set of icons that are very commonly used in the application and I've gone ahead and assigned a named range. So for example, I've inserted this folder, I've given it a color, although it doesn't make a difference here. And I have assigned it a name range of open folder. 
and the reason I've done that is within the code it's really nice when you see uh, this instead of range D2 you see open folder as range so we'll go ahead and look at that in the code but I basically I was just assigned a name range just simply by close fold right just like that I've assigned a name and I've done that for unchecked icon as well as the checked icon and we have a default icon and this is for when we have an extension that we do not have an assigned we can use this default and you can change this to any icon you want and uh, we can assign that as well default icon so we can have a name range for that as well and so that is going to be really helpful oh you know what we've assigned that let's go ahead and uh, change that and let's go ahead and uh, go into the formulas and the name manager and we'll look up default icon we'll just change the location of that here we go the d6 okay so now we've got our default icon and you'll see how we have our open folder is assigned to this one here our closed folder is assigned to d3 here and so on so we've assigned those name ranges even though it's a single cell it's going to be really helpful moving forward so we're going to move quickly there's a lot to cover in this one so basically i have only added colors here although they don't have any effect on the colors we will use uh we we are using actually um a, a conditional formatting on the colors here and let's go ahead and find one that uh, hasn't been assigned and we'll go ahead and assign that let's see if we can find one that's just black and uh, so we can we can uh, go ahead and see how we've gone ahead and assigned the colors on that I don't see any here under let's go ahead and uh, I think I've assigned all of the colors but uh, there's a lot of different ways uh, that we can do that um, all right let's go ahead and change the color of this one to a dark red okay a little bit darker this is one I've assigned to the video and basically uh, this is going to use as a formula to locate that and we'll go over that in just a bit so here we have our icons and let's go ahead and take a look at this now let's say we wanted to change the color on this we would select it now all we're gonna do is we're gonna copy that icon now they all look the same here in the in the uh, in this area in the function area here they're all gonna look the same with that question mark but don't worry they're actually different we're gonna copy that control C and then we're gonna go over to the file manager right and um, in this screen here all we're going to do is go into the conditional formatting and I'm going to go ahead and uh, actually I'm going to delete this I believe it's this one that's one of the unfortunate things we don't really know uh, so it's good to sign in because they all look the same under this uh, scenario here but I believe it's this one okay and let's delete it and we'll apply it okay good that worked so you see they all went to black now so you see now let's go ahead and recreate that we're gonna go new rule okay and we're gonna format only cells that contain and the cell value is going to be equal to and then we're gonna paste here we're gonna paste that icon it's just a dot here but in actuality uh, in the character it's actually gonna be assigned and then we're gonna assign it a format we're gonna give it a font color and uh, let's go ahead and put red back where it was um, you can assign any color you want click OK click OK and now we obviously we don't want it to just on R10 we wanted to assign it all the way in this column from uh, R, R8 through R1000 so we'll go ahead and simply copy and paste the applies to from another one and then we're gonna paste it right in here and then when we click apply you see them all change to red so we've done that with each and every one of them so uh, you can assign your own colors you can and I try to use different colors for the icons that's way it's easier to tell them apart because based on just looking at them it's hard to know what uh, is what so if you want to make those changes try to assign slightly different color to each so that they're easily recognizable uh, as you see I only have one red and that's for video so that is exactly how we've assigned colors to that and um, what we've done is I've used a formula and basically let's go over this formula to see how I've looked it up so what I'm doing here is I've loaded in my uh, file 
name here, our file type, our file size. And so basically what I want to do here is I want to, let's go ahead and uh, click on here. And what I want to do is I want to uh, make sure that there's a name here. So we're going to check that there's a name. And what I want to do is I want to find this extension, PNG. I want to separate this, right? So I want to locate this. And then what I want to do is I want to look up PNG, right? I want to extract PNG and I want to look it up here, right? I want to find it here. And once it's found, I want to find this icon here and I want to return this. So we're going to look up PNG and we're going to return what's to the left of that. So what I've done is I've signed some name ranges here and you can see the name ranges for the file extension is this entire column G. So that's the named range. So we're going to use that file extension for this entire name range. OK, so we're going to look up. We're going to use match and we're going to use index. So first we're going to match. We're going to find the match looking for PNG. And when it's found, it's going to return this. So we also have file type icon and that's this here. So we're going to use index to index this. We're going to use match to match this. When it's found, we're going to index it. And I'll go over that with you. So we're going to use two of those name ranges, file extension and file type icon. So now you see where we're referencing it. Let's go back into the file manager, back into our code right here. So the first thing I want to do is I want to extract MP4 from this name. So we can do that. First, we are going to use this find. We're going to find this, find this, find the dot in MP4. Okay, we're going to find that. So once it's found in this, we're going to add one because we want to increase it. We want to include this dot, right? So we want to find it. And then what we want to do is basically extract using the right. We're going to extract so that we only get this. So we only get the extension here, right? That's all we want to do is we want to get that extension. Then we're going to match that extension in the file extensions. Remember, that's the name range I showed you. So it's going to locate. What row is that on? So it's going to locate, right? It's going to locate right here, right here, match, right? So if we go into the formulas right here, right? And we evaluate that formula, we're, it's going to show you. Let's go ahead and evaluate so we can see how that's working. So we can zoom in, evaluate. First, it's going to, if this is blank, video is blank, then return blank. So what we want to do is want to check if the name is blank, we're going to go back. Okay, so it's not blank. Great. The next is if, if we're going to say video thumb, the length, we're going to get the length of this, right, the entire thing. And we are going to find the period. So we're going to do that now. And we're going to... So we're going to find this within S11. So the next step, it's found. And it's going to say, OK, it's, we found it at character 11. We found that dot at character number 11. So we're going to take all of the characters of the entire name and we're going to subtract. That gives us three, right? And then we're going to add one. So basically, this says within video thumb, take all the length, the length of the entire length of it, which is 14, then subtract 11. Why 11? 11 is the place where this is found. The dot, the point is found and number 11. And then we're going to add one. The reason we're adding one is because we actually want to include the dot as well. If, if, it, if it wasn't, if we weren't adding one, it would just return PNG. But I want to return dot PNG because dot PNG is where we're going to actually find that, right? Because all of our extensions include the dot, so we want to find it. So we continue on with our evaluation, three plus one. So we have four. So it's the fourth, so we're going to return four dot PNG. We're going to return the right, the right, right? Four characters dot PNG. So that's what we're going to return. So now we have extracted our PNG. Now we're going to use the match. We're going to use the match. We're going to match PNG. We're going to match it in the file extension. So remember, we showed you that named range. So the file extensions is in the file types G4 through G2100. OK, 
Okay, so we're going to match that, and it's going to tell us that uh, we have found it in row 64. 64 is where it's been found. And now what we're going to do is we're going to index file types. Remember, file types is the actual icon. So we're going to, so it's going to say, go to the file types and return to us whatever is in row 64. So we're going to evaluate that once more, and it's going to say, okay, we're going to return this little icon, which is actually the picture icon, and we're going to put it right in in the D6. Okay, so that's it. So that's how it's done. So that is how we get to this picture and it returns. Now, we've, of course, we've set the font to font awesome. That's critical. Any other font is just going to return something quite different, as you can see. So we want to keep it at font awesome. So the font in this entire column and this one, the one to the left, is also font awesome. We're using those two fonts. So it's important that you set those fonts to that. So that is how we return the icon there. And now let's look at this folder structure. We've got a lot to cover here. Let's go ahead and look at this folder structure. Now the idea that I want is when I click on an icon here, I want it to close. If I click again, I want it to open. Okay. And both in both instances, I want the folder to load. If I click here on the images, I want it to not only open up all the subfolders, but I also want to display all of the files within that. If I click again, it closes it and it keeps the files displayed. So that is how we're going to do that. Let's go into the code to see how that was done. Let's go into the VBA model under the developers tab. We're going to go into Visual Basic and we're going to view our code here. If you don't have the developers tab open, make sure you can see it through under file um, options and uh, you can go into the customize ribbon and you can find the developers tab just select it here. You can also press alt F11 to get in there. Also, we're going to have a custom tab in, uh, I believe, training number three or four. We're going to work on a custom tab. Uh, so that's going to be coming up soon. If that's something that you guys want to see to putting these buttons in a custom tab, we can do that as well. I'm just experimenting with that a little bit. So under visual basic, we go and we have some on sheet, not too many, but we have some on sheet uh, code here. And let's go over that. We always start out, if you remember, if the target count is greater than one, then exit sub. It's going to, if we don't do that, it's going to provide a bug. When we select a lot of rows, we don't get a, we don't get a, any kind of a bug. So we've always done that when we select multiple cells or multiple rows or columns. This helps us remove bugs. Now, our first code is if we select something within D through O, right and b2 is false and i'll go over what b2 is false is on the folder so this is on folder selection we want something to happen right we only want two things to happen really if the folder is closed right if the current value is closed we want to open it and if the current value uh, is an open folder icon we want to close it so those are the two things so let's go over that one more time if the current icon is open we want to close it if it's closed, we want to open it. So we're going to run different macros based on the current value. And the reason is we've selected D through O because theoretically our folder could be in any particular, any particular um, column. So we don't know what column is. So we're going to use D through O. And we don't use P. P is a space. Okay, P is a space. Just a, it's a it helps. So if we were to remove that space, we would see the uh, see some things uh, we don't want our text to go over over this line so we've used this as a space if you click here you just see it's just a little space that helps us protect from our text bleeding over into the other fields so it's kind of a nice and then uh, it's kind of a nice touch so the idea is uh, clicking on that closes it clicking on this and opens it up so that is all we're doing there and let's go ahead and see how that's done. Back into the VBA, we have, um, and basically B2 here, let me go ahead and unhide that so you can see some of the inner workings. Uh, as with the other videos, in fact, almost all of them, we're going to use columns A and B for admin stuff. And this is something you'll want to hide when using it. Uh, so this helps us keep track of this. And so uh, basically, 
we have just some items that we're going to use for admin and I'll go over each one of these. B2 is uh, we need to set some instances where when we load the file it goes to true and then back to false again. So we're just making sure that we're not loading the file. I'll go over that with you in a little bit detail later. So we want to make sure those two conditions if there's a selection between D8 and O1000 you can increase this number if you like to 10,000 or 100,000 if you like uh, and so also B2 then we're going to do two things if the target value if the value is a closed folder icon we're going to expand it so let's go ahead into the expand folder macro now so we can go over that and we have uh, modules one is a uh, folder macros and one is a uh, file macro so let's go into folder macros scroll up so we can locate our macros here and we have the expand folder let's go ahead and go to this and so we can go uh, to this macro here um, and see what it is now here we go we're going to set the FSO that is file system objects we're going to create an object and I have already dimensioned because so many of our macros use these common uh, items here variables we uh, have dimensioned them all the way at the top so that they cover for each and every macro that we use below so we're going to be using uh, some numbers some numbers like subfolder quantity row numbers so we'll use those throughout the macros below we also have objects now an object object FSO is the file system object we're going to be using that throughout uh, this training and that's going to be an object as well as one for folders as well as one for subfolders and files so we'll be using all of those throughout the application and then we'll, we've dimensioned a few ranges as well so into the expand folder here first thing we want to do is we want to set so we know what we're working on and this is going to be late binding so we're going to set this FSO as a create scripting file object okay scripting this is going to basically set this so we know which object we're dealing with this sets the object to the scripting is the is the FSO the file system objects and this helps us access the file systems on our computer the next step is stop calculations and I've done this for speed as in other videos basically all we're doing with this stop calculation is we're gonna run this it just says the calculation goes to manual and the screen updating is false the only thing with this is we want to make sure when the macro ends that we reset that we set the calculations back to automatic and the screen updating back to true so you'll see anytime we use stop calc on a macro we always reset the calculation before the macro exit so that's important there and the next thing is we want to set the range we're going to be working with the range of d8 through o1000 and that is the range of our folders that is the entire range that is going to be starting with d8 and going all the way to o1000 so we're working with that range and so we want to set that range up because I want to first I want to determine what the last row is when I expand it I want to know what the last row is and if you look on here sometimes the last row can be any any row within this entire range so I want to know what that is and I want to be able to uh, access I want to determine the last row so that's important so that's going to help us uh, do that so let's go ahead and back into the macro so what I want to do is I want to find that last row so we're gonna set this range to this entire range here and actually we don't need sheet one because we've already said with sheet one so it's not necessary to determine sheet one again unless we're referencing a different sheet and then we would want to do that so under the what we're gonna do is we're gonna set we want to find the last row in a range the last row in a range not the last row in a column that's a little bit easier okay so we want the last row in a range and this is gonna help us what we're gonna be look use we're gonna use the find and what we're gonna be looking for is basically any text and this star lets us any text and after the cells after the first cell okay and we're gonna look part we're gonna look in all the formulas and we're gonna look search by rows and the direction is going to be previous okay expert and we're gonna and we don't need to match the case it's going to return the last range okay it's gonna return and we can determine it's gonna return the last range this is a range
So to get the last row, all we need to do is uh, click here, found last and dot row. Since this is a range, found last is a range, the last row is the row. If we wanted to know the column, we would change this to column. And then that would tell us the last column. But for our purposes, we want row. So that's how we get the last row in a range, the last use row, the last row with text. We have also need to dimension. First, we want to set the load to true because I need to know when files are being loaded. When files and folders are being manipulated by the code, I don't want anything else to run. In other words, if this folder expands, I don't want anything else to run when that's going on. So we always want to set this to true while it's running. And then when it's finished running, we're going to set it back to false. So. Uh, back into there. So what I want to do now is I want to clear. When we expand the folder, I want to clear uh, certain fields. I want to clear the contents of our files because we're going to reload them. So basically what I want to say is I want to clear this and I want to clear all of this. But I don't want to clear this because this is a formula. So we want to keep that, we want to keep that formula. When you release your applications, you will want to make sure this is protected. Okay. Uh, you would want to protect this column so that no changes can be made. So we're going to clear the selection and we're going to clear all these fields. And we actually have one more hidden field and that is the file name. Let's go ahead and show that to you. Unhide that. And that is the long file name, the path uh, also of the particular file. And that's going to help us when we do things like copy and pasting and deleting. But generally you don't want to see that so you'll, you'll want to hide that. So back into the code we go, and um, so we're going to clear all the existing files because we want to clear, we're going to reload that, so we want to clear it. And then we want to do is, since we're expanding the folder, I want to take the active cell value and I want to change it to sheet to open folder. Remember? Uh, actually, we can put value on that. Um, I think that'll help us, but uh, it's not entirely necessary, but it's good coding. So when we, when we open a folder, remember open folder here right here open folder that's the name range see it's so much easier to recognize when you set those particular named ranges you see we don't have to say sheet to cell b1 we may not know what it is but when we've named those ranges it's so easy to know what we're doing what we're working with that's why we named those ranges and uh, then what we're going to do is we want to define we want to know what row we've made changes to and so we're going to set the row numbers, the actor cell, the current row that we're on. And now we're going to do it one more time here because those are going to change. So we've set two values to the same for now. We may clean this code up a little bit in the future as we build out this application over the next few weeks. We also want to set the column number to the active cell column plus one because we're going to be expanding those folders if there are any subfolders. And I need to know what the next column is we're going to be working with. So when we, when we click on open, right, we're going to be working with this column here, which is one column over, right, one column over. So if we, if we do it once more, that means we're going to be working with this column. So that means we need to know what the next column is. So we've defined that next column as the column number. And then again, last row is the last row. So now we've defined all of our variables. Now we can start um, setting up our information. Now, I also want to know what the previous folder was because we have a back. When we go back, I want to know when we use this back, I want to know what the previous folder is. So we've set some information. I want to know, I want the previous folder location here. I want the next folder location here. I want the current folder location in B5. And then I want the default folder. The default folder is when we click home, I want that default folder. So we really have those particular locations set up right now. So in our code, we're going to say um, B3 is, is the previous folder equals B5. So we're going to set the previous folder locations so that when we go back, we know where to go.
And eventually we may have an entire history. Right now we don't have a history, but maybe in future versions we'll create another table that has an entire history. So you can go back, back, back. Right now we're only going to go one. But when you click back, you'll see it goes right back to there. But that's it, right? Just the last one. We only have one back. But I think in the future versions we may create additional, additional history so we can go back as many as we want, as many as they're saved. So that's going to help us there. Um, and uh, also we have the ability to um, click on home which gives us our default folder so we have a lot of flexibility here and let's go back into the code so we can see so now we know we're gonna set the previous folder and now we set the current folder to B and the active cell row why B because B is the column in which we are storing those folders let's go ahead and open that up that fast you can see it B is the path of the folder so we have our folder here and B you'll see is the actual path right so we have that hidden since we don't necessarily need to see it but we do need it we need to know where we're going with that so under under B we have the active cell value that's gonna tell us it's gonna put our it's gonna put the current folder path in B5 so all we're doing here is we're taking whatever path here. So if we click bins, right? Let's go ahead and expand that. If I click, if I click services, okay, see this path here? If I click services, we need to know what the current folder is. It's going to put that current folder right here, services, right? You see how that changed to services? And then the old path went to bins. So we know the history. So that's all we're doing here is we're taking the current, because I always want to know what the current folder path is. And because I want to take that path and I want to do some things with it. So if we change it to testimonials, testimonials goes here, services goes back here. So you can see actually what is going on there. And now what we're going to do is we want to set the object folder as an object because we're going to work with that folder. And we're going to basically say the folder, here's the string, that's the actual file path. We're going to get that folder so we can work with it. So it's going to set the object to that folder using the file system or FSO. All right. And now what we're going to do is we want to know also the subfolders because we want to know, we want to pull all the subfolders from that. So we need to set the object subfolder as this folder and its subfolders. This is going to help us get the subfolders. Now, every once in a while, based on a I also want to know the count. I want to know how many subfolders are in here. Now, if it's a protected folder, you may get uh, some error. So we've set on air, resume next. Every once in a while, certain protected folders, we are not allowed to get the count of it, or it returns an error when we do get a count. So we've put this on air. And what we want to do is I want to know how many subfolders are inside. The reason I need to know how many subfolders is because I need to know how many if we're clicking here right and I need to know how many rows I need to move I need to move all of this down but I need to know how much down in this case one two three four right we need to know how many rows to down so we need to pull the number of subfolders from there so that helps us do that as well so once we have that count we can then increase the rows by that count and so it's important that we know we've gotten that quantity so here we go and then this just helps us if the error number equals zil then what it's going to do is if there is a if there is an error it's going to pull a subtotal quantity another way right subfolder quantity another way basically if there's an error it's going to take use this to find the sub quantity it's going to use a different method okay so that this is like a, a different way in case there was an error because it's a protected folder then it'll use this method for each object subfolder and object subfolder increase the quantity so there are two methods to get the number of subfolders okay now we move on now we have the the subfolder now we're going to check if the if the subfolder quantity is less than one meaning if there are no subfolders then we don't need to expand right so we're going to skip all of this and go right to here because the this code here expands the rows right all of this code expands it but if there are no subfolders all we want to do let's see if we can find an instance where there are no subfolders 
Okay, in bins there's no subfolders, right? In this there's no subfolders, so we have nothing to expand, right? All we need to do is display uh, the items within that folder. So we don't, we're not going to be expanding, so it skips, it skips those. And for instances where there are subfolders, I'll walk you through that code right now. So what we want to do is we want to take the current row number plus one, plus the last row and copy that. So what that does is it says, okay, I know. I know that there are, are subfolders in here, right? So what it's going to do is going to say, okay, I want to take all of this. I want to go to the last row, right? I want to go all the way down to the last row. I'm going to copy that. We're going to copy that, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to paste it in a certain place. We're going to paste it down here, right? Somewhere down here, some rows down. And we're going to use the number of, the number of, um, subfolders to paste. So if there's four subfolders, it's going to count one, two, three, four, and then paste it down there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all those folders and we're just going to paste them right below. And we're going to paste the values. Our formats are set up already. Our conditional formatting is set up. So we just need to paste those values. And I'll do that right now. So we're going to copy that. We're going to use the last row. We're going to copy that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to paste it. But we're going to paste it. We're, we're going to add the subfolder quantity. So based on the number of subfolders, we're going to paste it that many rows below, and then we're going to paste those values. Our formats are set. We don't need to use that. And then we're going to do the same thing for B. Remember, B is our file extensions, our folder, our long folder names in B. So we're going to do the same thing for B. So I want to do, so basically when I insert it, I also want to do it here as well because this is our folder path. So it's important that these paths remain consistent with whatever, whatever is there. So when we close that up, all, you know, everything must line up. So we want to make sure we do whatever we do here in these fields, we want to do in B as well so that the folder paths always line up with the folder. So that is why we duplicate that in column B as well right here. And then once we've copied that, we're just going to uh, application uh, cut copy mode equals false so that we don't have the dancing ants. We're done with that. And then we're going to select uh, we're going to select uh, the current column, the current row, just so that we unselect whatever has been copied and pasted. And then what we need to do is in column D and row, we want to clear out basically whatever the subfolder quantity is I want to clear we've pasted it below and I want to clear it outline I'll show you how that works so basically if I know there are if I know there's four subfolders right so first we're gonna copy this we're gonna paste it four rows below and then whatever is in those four rows whatever's in those four rows we're gonna clear out I want to clear them out because that's where the subfolders are going to go so that's what we're doing there. So we're clearing out the subfolder, clearing those contents, just the contents, not the uh, formats or anything like that. Now we're going to add the subfolders. Now we're going to take those, let's say, four rows, and we're going to add the subfolders in. So for each object subfolder in the sub, so basically this is saying for each folder, each subfolder in the main folder, do the following. So for each one, we're going to do some things. The first one is the row number, right? The row number plus one and the column number. We are going to add the close folder icon. So we're going to, so for each one, we're going to add a closed folder icon. That means when we collect images, we want that closed folder icon to appear right here, here, and here. So that will add that icon. So we want to add that icon. And then we also want to add the folder name and we want to add the location. So we really want to add three things. We want to add the name of the folder, the file path, and the icon. So those three things we are going to do now. So folder name is here, and we're going to add this into the column number plus one, right? The main column, we get the closed folder. Plus one column to the right is the name. And then B, the column B, we're going to put the path. So those are the three items we're adding. And then for each instance, we're going to increase that row number one. Right? For each instance, we're going to go one below, one below. So that is how we add the subfolders. All right, so now we're done. Now what we need to do is we add, need to add the files. Now when we, when we open up a folder, I need to add all of the files in here. 
I need to add all the files in here. Every time we click a folder, I want to add all these files, all the files existing in that. And we do that with the following code. So first of all, we're going to set our file row to 8. And the reason we use 8 is because that is the first row that we're going to be actually placing any files. Let's go ahead and close this so you can get a better idea. So that's the first row. So we're going to, we want to set that first row at 8. And then what we're going to do is we want to get all the files. So we know we know the folder. Here's the folder, right? In B, we know we we just put the folder there, so we know what folder the file path is. And we're going to say we're just going to determine that folder. What folder are we working with? Now we're working with that folder. And we're going to say for each file in so we're going to say first of all, we're going to determine here's the folder and this describes all the files within the f folder and so we're going to say for each of those files do the following and this is basically all of the file details and in Q we're going to put the unchecked icon okay unchecked icon as we reference in sheet 2 we want that we want to put the in S we want to put the file name T the file type U the size and uh, V is the date created uh, w is the last modified and then X is the file path. X is often hidden, right? Because we don't necessarily need to show that. And then we're going to increase one row. So we're going to go through each of these and that places all of the information right here. Here in Q, we have the uh, checkbox. It's going to be the empty checkbox. We have, remember, this icon is automated, so we're skipping that because that's based on a formula. The file name in S, the file type in T, size in you, date created, date modified, and the path. So we have all those items that we're entering right there. We can go ahead and shrink this a little bit so you can get a better idea of it. So that is how we add the file details right there. And um, we have already, let's, let me check, I uh, skip something here. We have already cleared the contents. This is important. Remember, we need to clear, we've already cleared out the locations, all of the data. So that's important. We've cleared that out so that we can go ahead and add those file names. So we add all of the file details here. So now that we've added all the file details, and now uh, I want to give this nice look of here right see I want I want to know because in future versions I want to be able to click on this and go directly to that so in future versions we're gonna hopefully I can do it let's see in future versions I want to click on Randy and go right to that folder I want to click on documents and go right to that folder I think I'm gonna do it with some shape over it because this is a single this is a single cell right and so we can't really add multiple links within a single cell. I wish we could, but I don't think there's a way. But I'm going to try adding a shape, uh, a variable width shape based on the number of characters. We're going to work on that so that when they click on the shape that hovers over it, it goes. So I'm going to try that. That'll be in future versions. But right now what I want to do is I want to take, I want to convert this path. Remember, this is our current folder. I want to take this path and I want to convert it to this nice looking. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this backslash right here and I'm going to replace it. I'm going to replace it with this right. Let's go ahead and go back there. I want to take it and I want to replace that backslash with a space, the uh, greater than, and then another space. So that's all we're doing. So each instance of a backslash, I'm going to replace it. And that's just what I have done in the code using the replace feature here. So we're taking, let me get out of that. Let me get out of that. There we go. So we're taking this um, H5 value and we're going to say equals. We're taking the, and this is the folder location. So basically for each instance of the forward slash, for each instance, instance of that, we're going to replace it with space greater than and then space. So that's all we did there to create that. We're putting it right in H5. So that is how we've given the look of, of having this particular view here because we're going to use that a little bit later on in future versions. So that's how that was done. And then um, let's go ahead and uh, back into the module so we can finish up this training on this particular macro. And then we're selecting A1. Just I'm just selecting another cell so that uh, we, don't, uh, we don't have any other selection. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to set the current folder. We're going to make sure B5 is the current folder. This may not be necessary. Um, I think we did that already up here, so probably not necessary. And let me move that up a little bit just in case. I want to make sure it's always accurate. This should be before. Let's go ahead and set that up right here. Okay. We want to make sure that's before H5, just in case for changes. And then we're going to set the load files to false. And we're going to set the active scroll window date. And the reason we set the active scroll window, because if you've scrolled here, right, if you scroll, and let's close, let's reduce these so we can get a full picture here, since we're not working with A and B. So if you if you open something like my videos, I want I want to go right up to the top. And there's no details in that, or my pictures. Right, I want to go right up to the top of the top row when there's when there's any files in there. So, for example, this I want to make sure that we scrolled up. So even when we scroll down, right, when we click on my videos, I want to. Oh, let's go ahead. Oh, permission denied. Okay, let's go ahead and fix that. This is what we're saying. So we could. So sometimes folders don't have the permission. So we can set that for that's in this particular field. This folder. Uh, on. Okay, there we go. And now we fix that. Those that folder doesn't have permission. I think we're going to find a, a workaround with that in future versions. I don't necessarily like to use that as error handling, but in some cases it's necessary because that file. What I really want to do is I don't want to even display folders that don't have permission. I don't want them displayed in this list. So that's what I would like to do in the in the future. Uh, in these cases so we're gonna work on that in future versions let's go ahead and reset the calculations uh, when it stops midway between a calculation we always want to reset that and we can click home and let's go ahead and go into the next macro so let's go ahead and go into the close now we've we've just focused on on how we on how we uh, expand a macro, but let's go ahead and how we close a folder, right? Because when we close a folder, what I want to happen is I want to, first of all, I want to find out where the next folder is below, and I want to basically delete or hide, clear the contents of those two lines out, and I want to move, and I want to find out the last row, and I want to move everything up. I want to move everything up, you know, up two spaces. So that's how we're going to use the close. Let's go ahead and see how that's done within the code in back into the folder macros and the next uh, macro is here is close folder. So let's go ahead and go through that and uh, also we're going to do the same thing. We're going to set the range because we also again need to find out what the last rows. So this is just like it was uh, in the previous macro where we find the last row going to set the uh, the load files to uh, true because we're loading them and then we'll set that to false. We're also going to set the active cell value to close. I want that icon I want that icon to change from open to close. Right? So from clo open to close. So that I want that to change to close. So we do that by setting the active cell value to the close icon. You can do that value. And uh, so then we're going to determine the current row number and the current column, num column number. Those are helpful for those two variables here. Now also, um, what I want to do is I want to say if the active cell value, if it's not empty, then go to skip. And what this is, is basically what we're saying is if, um, if there is no subfolders, if there is no subfolders, then we don't need to copy and paste. For example, let's go ahead and pull something up here. In, in bins, for example, in bins, there's no subfolders, right? So if we click to close it, we don't have to change anything about this folder structure. All we need to do is really change the icon. So in those instances, that means what it's saying is if there's no space between this folder and the folder below, there's no space then skip anything. And that's what we're doing with this code here, right here. It's saying if the active cell offset value, that means that means one cell below, the row offset, one below, this is the column offset, so no offset on the column, does not equal empty. That means there's no spaces below, then skip, copy, and paste. So for instances, for example, this 
right, has empty faces. This, so we would not want to skip this because there's empty spaces below. So when we close this one, we want to make sure that we reduce, we close, that we clear out these four rows. But for bins, for this folder, there is no, so we just close it. So in certain instances, we do that. That is why we have that differentiation. That's why we're going to skip because all of this here, all of this here, uh, right before skip cut paste, is going to allow us to clear out those rows and move them up. But in instances where there's no open folders, we don't have to do that. So what we want to do is that we want to determine how many rows do we have. This, the next row is, this is going to help us determine how many rows that we're going to need to insert. For example, in this one, there's two, one, two. So that formula helps us count, count. We need to know the count because it's a variable, right? And this one is four, right? So we need to know how many. So that, that helps us count that right there. Let's go ahead and back into that code here. Okay, so we're going to say, now, if it's the last row, if it's, in other words, if it's greater than this, that would mean it's the last row, then we do, all we do is we clear the current contents of B, and uh, we clear out everything below it, and we skip copy. So this, this instance is, means the last row. So if the last folder is open, we do something a little bit different. So for example, this is the last row. You see there are no you see there are no closed folders, right? So in this instance, all we're doing is clearing these folders out because this is the last row. So all we're doing is clearing that out. So in the last row, there's nothing. So that's how that is done. We have to make a condition in case that's the last row. So this tells us, okay, if there's the last row, do this. Clear the contents of B, right? Because we don't want to clear and clear all the contents of the D plus O. So it's going to clear out all those folders, and it's not going to move anything up because there is nothing else to move up. Next up, and then it's going to skip anything below that. Next up here, all in these in these particular code, all we're doing is we're moving up all the folders above. So we're copying everything. We're pasting the values above, and the same thing for B, right? These four lines of code, I'll show you what we're doing here. What we're doing is we're gonna basically saying, okay, we're gonna close this folder images. So I wanna take this, and I wanna go all the way to the bottom, and I wanna go, and then I, what I wanna do is I wanna copy it, right? Copy it, and then what I wanna do is I wanna go right here, and I wanna paste the values. That's what I wanna do. That's what we're doing through through VBA, just like that. That's all we're doing. So that let's go ahead and see how that works in VBA, and uh, we'll go back to where we were. So again, we're copying the the whole range. We're going to paste the values, and we're going to do the same thing for B, so that the folder file paths, the folder paths, also get copied as well. Then what we're going to do is we want to clear any remaining uh, data all the way below, right? So that it's going to take the last bit of information at the contents below and clear them out. That means that when we copy that, we're going to have some remaining folders down here that are not necessary. So we're going to delete that and we're going to also do it in, in B as well. So that is how we insert. It's a little bit complicated, but uh, once we go through it. And the next step basically is, again, I want to uh, clear, I want to reload the files. And this is the same information. There's no difference, right? Same information as we did up here. All we're doing is reloading the files. And so that means that when we, even when we close a folder, I want to, I want to, I want to also, uh, I want to reload the folder again. So for example, if we're on images, right now, now, and we close and we close the images folder, I don't want the files to remain. I'll, so if we close 220 junk here, I want 220's contents, and I want, I want, I don't want images since we just closed it. So that's the reason we've updated to whatever folders we've selected. And so if we open it again, it's going to keep the same files. So opening and closing it also shows the contents of the particular file that we have opened or we have closed. So that is the reason we 
go ahead and load all those details again and everything else is set and now we have another one which is kind of cool we're going to set the default folder this gives us the ability because we we may want a specific folder that we go into each time and I've created it home right so when we right click this and we assign the macro you'll see it's been assigned to go to home folder and that is that macro that we just saw and basically what I want to do is I want to say okay right now our home is documents but let's say I want to I want to set it to 220 junk all we need to do is click this macro here assign macro and this macro is set at the as default folder so when we click that now it sets that as the default folder and you'll see that message pop up default folder so now when let's say we go to another folder and we go to another folder so now when we click home it goes right back to uh, 220 junk so that's a really uh, nice feature because we can set a particular folder for that so let's go ahead and I like this folder so I'm gonna reset this one as default so that allows us to set a specific folder as the default folder then all we need to do is click home and it goes always to that whatever the folder that is and we do that simply by uh, basically we have set here we have our default folder set in B6 so all we really need to do is take this current folder and copy it over to the default folder that's all we're really doing with the macro uh, it's really really simple let's go ahead and go ahead over into that and you'll see sheet 1 B6 equals sheet 1 B5 set the default folder and then we want to display that fade out messages you've seen fade out messages in another training and that basically allows us to display a message in a little flashing or fading style and so that's all that that does so that is how we set our default folder and uh, let's take a look we've got we've covered open folder we've covered expand folder did we cover open folder uh, open folder we did basically and um, now we have uh, some others we have go to home folder so the go to home folder which we just saw is also gonna say okay our b3 we're gonna set the previous folder because we always want to know whatever was in b5 and we're gonna take remember this is the location of the default folder always so we're gonna move that to B5 and then we're going to use open folder open folder let's go ahead and over that I think we did that open folder basically all it does is it opens whatever's in B5 and it loads the folders it clears out it clears out any of the folders it's going to go over and display all of the subfolders all the subfolders and all the files in that we've gone over specifics of these in the previous macros so open folders will do just that it loads the subfolders and it loads the files so we use this in after many macros so like for example if we if we set b5 to a specific instance b5 I know I'm moving fast we got so much to cover here b5 is the current folder right so if we know what the current folder is we pull that and then we basically load all of the subfolders in that and we load all the files so when we click home right we take b5 we load the subfolders and we load the files that is all we are doing with that macro b5 remember b5 is the is our always location of the current folder so we take b5 right here and we load b5 because we set our previous folder value and then what we want to do is we always want to say okay b5 value is the folder location so from there we're going to load the folders okay load the folders here determine the number of determine the number of subfolders and let me put it on here there because that might if it's a protected folder it might might go there so we determine the number of subfolders we add in all the subfolder details in B we add the subfolder path in D we add the closed folder icon E we add the name and then we add the files so that is how we do that let's go over a few more we've coming up on an hour soon so I know this is a long training but there's just so much to cover here so we've covered default folders we covered home now let's go ahead and cover selection now what I wanted to do basically in the, in the formatting is I wanted to here's a here's one of the file managers that I use and I wanted to kind of give this feeling what I wonder is when I select something right 
I want it to check. And I want it to, but however, if I want to hover over something, if I want to check multiple ones, this is the feature that I wanted in the Excel file manager as well. So you select one, it unselects everything else. However, if you select the checkbox itself, then you can select multiple. And I wanted to do this same thing in Excel, so I believe we've achieved it here. So if we select one, let's go ahead and hide these uh, for now so we don't, there we go. So now if we select one, it's going to select multiple. However, if we, if we select just the, the file or anything within that, it's going to select just one. So because we want to work with multiple files, in the future we're going to be um, moving files, we're going to be renaming files perhaps, uh, we're going to have a lot more buttons up here. Uh, and so um, we're going to be working with multiple files. So in this instance, we want to do that. Now you'll see that the color changes. And how did we do that? Well, the selected row automatically, let's go back into the um, on sheet macros, which is right here. And we'll go ahead and take a look at some. Now you see we have additional, we covered this, okay, this. And next up, we want to cover this. If there is a selection in Q8 through Q1000, that is the column for the check mark. We're going to basically say if the check mark is an uncheck icon, then put a check. Otherwise, put an uncheck. So this less allows us to check or uncheck. And then we just, uh, this unselects the current item so that we can easily select it again. That's all this does. And we just use A1, we can use any cell. So basically when I select, I can select, select, or select again. So basically it's saying if the current icon is a checked, change it to unchecked. If the current icon is unchecked, change it to checked. So this is a really, really handy feature. And we do that with just the macros that I've shown you, just this little bit of code right here. Next up, we have if there's a selection in R8, these are, remember, these are selection change if the user simply makes a selection. If there's a selection within R8 through W1000, do something. And what do we want to do? Well, first of all, I want to uncheck everything else. If there's anything that's checked, I want to uncheck it. So we said Q8 through Q, and the last row, whatever the last row is, give it an uncheck item. I don't know why I always forget the value there. Maybe it's not critical, but it still works without it, but it's better coding. So basically what we're saying is if, let's say we've checked three of them. If the user selects here, uncheck everything else, but check only the one. So we've done it with this code right here. And also I want to highlight this row. And so I want to notate using conditional formatting, whatever row has been highlighting. And I believe we do that in uh, B, B1. B1 is our selected row. We run a conditional formatting, I've gone over that in many videos, based on that row number there. So we need to put the, the selected row number in B1. And we've done that uh, right in the code right here. We're saying B1 equals the target row. And we also want to select whatever row that is. We want to put a check icon right in that row. So basically, uncheck everything put the row for the conditional formatting of B1, and then check the current uh, item. And we've done that right here. All right, so that is how we do that. We are going to be adding filters. We're going to be adding search. There's nothing. These are more of a placeholder, so you can see what we have in the future planned. We've got a lot planned. So we're going to be adding search, and we're going to be adding sort, and we're going to be adding whatever else you guys come up with. We're also going to be adding the ability to add up to two, three, maybe even four tabs by clicking here. I want to add multiple tabs here, just like we have in, in some uh, types of file managers. So we're going to be adding that. We have also added the document names here. I've used this through a folder, right? So that means basically whatever folder we've selected is going to display the name of that folder here. We've done that through a particular uh, formula. And all we've done is we're locating the last, the last uh, forward slash there, backslash. And we've determined this through the folder through it and this B5, remember B5 is where our current folder location is. And all I want to do is find the last slash here and I want to just pull whatever's to the right of that. The right of that is the entire 
name of that folder. So we've extracted the name of the folder. We could have done this through VBA as well. That would have been just as easy. However, we've chosen to use a formula. Either way works for you to display the formula here. Um, maybe in the future, I think with these folders, maybe we'll use VBA for the variable folders, for the variable tabs. Maybe we'll use VBA on that as well. So we've covered that. Now uh, we've got a few other things. We've got copy, we've got paste, and we've got delete. And the idea is here, if I select here, and let's go ahead and uh, see that. Okay, so we have images here. Let's say I want to take this image and I want to copy them and then I want to paste them right in this folder. I can do that right here. There we are. There are the three of them. Now I want to delete them. Delete. Are you sure you want to delete? Yes and I want to learn. So I want to do that as well and I'll show you how we have done that and we use uh, advanced filtering here as well. So let's go ahead and go into the code. Now basically I've created an advanced filter criteria, a few of them here. We're using these specific ones for copy and paste. Now the idea is here if you select a specific, let's go back into images, I like using that folder if I select these three images for copy, right, I need to I need to pull those out, right? I need to separate those after we copy. And I need to, what I want to do is I want to take them. I want to run an advanced filter. I want to know which items were selected, right? Here's our criteria. Criteria is simply selection. And then whatever those items are, let's delete that right now. So whatever those items are, I want to put them right here. All the select items I want to appear right here. So when we copy that, we have let's let's select something different. When we copy those, let's say these four, and we click copy, I want to put all those selected items here, right here. So because when we paste them to another file, I need to know which ones. The reason is because when we select another folder, right, if we select this folder, we no longer have the check mode, so we need to save that information here. So that means when we paste or we copy those files, we're going to take all this information and we're going to put it right in this folder. So when we paste, it's going to do just that. It's going to take these four items from this list and paste them right into that folder folder. That is how we do that. And the same thing for delete. When we delete a folder, right, and then it's going to take those, it's going to run them into an advanced filter here, and then it's going to delete them based on the file pass. And this is just the date created. You can see this is just the date. The column's not large enough. Not so important for our, for our purposes. So let's go ahead and go over and see how we did that back into the file macros module here and let's go ahead and to see um, copy the selected folders. Now copying is very simple. All we're going to be doing is taking the selected items and putting them in the advanced filter. Once again with the copy all we're doing is taking these whatever selected copying them and we're going to put them right in here. That's all we're doing. All right. That's all we have to do is put them right here. Sorry, right here. These four items right here. So that's all we're doing with the code. And let's go ahead and see how we did that in the code. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to find the last row, whatever the last row is. Then we are going to run an advanced filter on this entire range. We're going to use the criteria that has been selected. So this stays here. Those, that's the criteria selected. And we're going to put the results right in the advanced column. So we've done that through the code. Let's go into the code. And under the copy, we've determined the last row using S, the column S. We're going to determine the last row. And then we're going to say if the last row is less than 8, that means there's no data, so we don't need to exit the set. We want to make sure that there actually is files within there. Then we're going to run, I, I want to clear out any other results that were in anywhere between EA3 and EH. I want to clear any results. In case there is results from a previous filter, I want to make sure that we clear this field. So that means anything that's already in EA3 all the way to EH999, whatever, I want to clear that. I want to, I want to delete that. I just want to make sure it's clear so when we run our new advanced filter, it's always updated. That is the reason we run the clear, clear any remaining results. Now we're going to run our advanced filter, our original data, Q7, 
through the last row, x in the last row, and x includes the file path in that column. We're gonna, we want to copy that, and we want to use the criteria. The criteria is DA2 through DH3. In this case, the criteria is only the check. Our criteria is only the check mark, right? DA, we must include the headers, DA2 through B, oh, excuse me, no, wrong one. Copy here, DA2 through DH, uh, DH3. So here's our Here's our advanced filter. In this case, it's just the check mark. And then we're going to put the results in EA3, excuse me, EA2 through EH2. Those where the results are going to go. So, and then we want unique values. So that is our advanced filter. Criteria here, DA2 through DH3. We're going to copy to EA2 through EH2, and then we're going to use unique. That's it. That is all we need to do to copy because then it's another macro that actually pastes it. And here's the paste the selected values. So in the paste, what I want to do is I want to take, I want to determine the current folder. I want to make sure there is data in there. I want to make sure that there really is some data here. There's none now. Let's go ahead and put some in there simply by clicking the copy. And that's going to put the data right here. So now we have data. All right, and so what it's going to do is it's going to say I want it's going to determine the last row based on EC. I think the file name, and then it's going to run through each of these rows, and it's going to find it's going to copy this old location. Here's going to take the path, right? It's going to find that old path. It's going to make a copy, and it's going to base a copy on two factors. One copy is the current folder location. Remember, the current folder location is in B5. The current folder location. It's going to add a backslash, right? We want to add a backslash. And then it's going to add the file name, whatever the file name is. And the file name is located right here. So it's going to take that entire, it's going to add the file name, and then it's going to put that right in the folder. And I'll show you how we did that within the code. So first we determine the last row. EC is the last row of our filtered results. Then it's going to say, okay, now we're going to run through each row from three to the last row of our field. The source file name, we know the source file name is in, is in EH. We just went over that. The source, that means where, where, the, uh, where it's currently at is here, EH. That is the current location. And we, so we know the source. We know the source of the location. We're going to call that source file name. And then we have to do the destination file name. And remember, the destination file name is the current folder here in B5 plus the backslash plus the file name, whatever the file name is in EC. So we're going to combine those three elements to create a destination file name. Then all we need to do is determine if the file already exists. So we're going to take that destination file name and we're going to say in the directory, does this, does this exist? If it, if it does, then we need to say, hey, this file name, create a pop-up message saying, this destination file name already exists. Would you like to overwrite it? If it's no, then we go to the next file. If it's yes, then we just continue right here. I've given you two different methods of uh, copying file. This is the basically the directory type name. This is a very simple. And this always overwrites. And this one, call object file, right now it's commented out because we do not want both, right? We just need one. We can also use it using the object uh, FSO system. So, and this true means overwrite. False would mean not overwrite. So you do have the ability to, to overwrite yes or no. So I wanted to show you both methods. The simple one, uh, source file name, what are we copying? And what is the destination? So with this line of code, we are actually copying each of those files and it's going to loop through every one and then once we get done we're going to run that macro remember reload the folder we want to reload the contents so that's how we do it so that when we actually pasting that file we've already copied them that means all four are here let's go to another folder let's go to video okay and let's go ahead and paste those files right in here and there they are one two three four right here now I want to delete them because I just created them. I'm going to select them. We're going to run an advanced filter and then we're going to delete them just like that. Are you sure you want to delete? Yes. And we're going to reload the folder. Let's go ahead and go through that macro to see how we've done that. And here's the macro right here. You'll notice some very similar things. 
Uh, we're going to determine the last row of our main files. I'm going to check to make sure there is data. We're going to clear any contents of the, of the existing advanced filter. We are going to put in the check mark. This is our criteria. Right, we need that. We need to know which items were selected. So we're going to put in right here that check mark BA3. And then we're going to run the advanced filter right here from CA to CH. And we're going to only choose those items that have been selected. So that is what our advanced filter is going to do. BA3 is the check icon. We're going to run our advanced filter from the original data. We're going to copy that data. We're going to use the criteria range BA2 through BA. That is the criteria. In this case, it only includes the check mark. And we're copying it to the range. So now we have our list of files to delete. We're going to make sure that we're going to get the last row of the filter. We need to need to loop through all of these. So I need to know the last row. The last row is here. So we're going to determine that last row, CH is the, the folder name. We're going to use the CH. So in this instance, we have used, uh, let's pull that up. In this instance, we have used the path. We could use any one of these as long as they're required, as long as there's actual data. We've used the path to determine the last row. So we've got the last row. Now we can loop through those items. So uh, we are going to go for file row equals three to last filter row. And we have our delete file name is going to equal whatever is the path, right? Path is in CH. So we got our delete file name. And then we're going to use the kill statement. And this deletes it. And we're going to go through each one to delete it. Then once we're done, we're going to reload that folder because I want to make sure the folder gets loaded with all the deletes. And reloading the folder simply clears out the existing data and reloads all of the files in there. So that is how we have done that. And we have a few more to go. Um, but what I want to do is I want to focus uh, right now on the ability to talk to you about what we have coming up. There's a lot to cover here. And in this particular uh, training, this is going to be maybe three, maybe even four parts, depending upon your ideas. So you are going to have an integral part of what goes into the next uh, features of this Excel file manager. So if more than any other time, please include your comments below in the description, whether you're on YouTube or Facebook. Uh, please go ahead and comment what your ideas are. What else would you like to see? Now, I know for sure we're going to have filter. I know for sure we're going to have a single click on the columns to uh, sort them. We're going to have that. We're going to have move for sure. I have even have some shapes already designed. We're going to have a lot, lots of features, some that I know of. And uh, we're going to have tabs. But what else would you like to see? So I'd love to hear your suggestions on this. We've gone way over time on this training, but there's so much to cover. And anything that I did miss, I think I missed a few things in here, like back and update. We'll go over in the next video for sure. And things might change. But I do want you to get your hands on this. So please go ahead and download it. Play with it. Take a look at it and give me the ideas that you have that you want to see in the next video because uh, you're going to play a big part in that. So uh, I wanted to thank you for joining me today. And uh, I look forward to next week and the week after where we are going to uh, be creating the best Excel file manager that you have ever seen. So thank you very much for joining me today and have a great day. Mm -hmm.